For as long as they've been around, the New York Mets seem to always be defined by great pitching. It's like at least once per decade, the Mets have a Cy Young caliber pitcher anchoring their staff, most of which are homegrown stars, which is huge for their starting pitching development. But there was once a Mets pitching prospect completely unlike the rest. His name? Sid Finch. Yes, he really is wearing one boot in this picture. He somehow had fun pitching this way. Time out here. If you know anything at all about the story of Sid Finch, don't immediately rush to the comments with it. The story of Sid Finch is going to be told in this video, and if you know the main thing about the story, please don't spoil it for others. If you don't know what I'm talking about, completely ignore what I just said and take this all in. We gotta go back to 1985 for this one, which is why we waited a little bit to cover it for a video. Now that it's 2020 and we're a nice 35 years out of 1985, it's a fitting time to revisit this. In the early 80s, the Mets weren't very good, but there was a lot of promise entering 1985. They had Dwight Gooden, who at the age of a traditional college freshman put up arguably the greatest rookie pitching season ever. Daryl Strawberry and Keith Hernandez led the lineup, which just added a future Hall of Fame catcher in Gary Carter. In spring training that year, a young pitching prospect named Sid Finch burst onto the scene pretty much out of nowhere. This was before mass prospect analysis and social media, so maybe he slipped through the cracks of the baseball world. Because, listen to this guy's origin story. Born Hayden Siddhartha Finch, he was born in England before briefly attending Harvard University. His adoptive father was an archaeologist who died in a plane crash in Nepal. Sometime between then and when the Mets found him, he went to a Tibetan monastery and found a new mentor in the great poet saint Lama Milaraspa. Hopefully I didn't just completely butcher the pronunciation there. And then he trained. And played the French horn too. He loved the French horn. Eventually, as he put it, he learned the art of the pitch. How'd the Mets find him? The story apparently goes like this. One day, the Mets AAA manager was walking to a hotel where Sid Finch approached him or the manager saw him or something like that. Sid went on to throw a baseball at a soda bottle that was sitting on a fence near the hotel. And the bottle exploded. The manager was floored, obviously. You can't really blame the rest of the league for not finding Sid because imagine instructing your scouts to find people hanging out by hotels who just happen to have a rocket for an arm. Wild, unexpected events happen all the time. In daily life, movies, video games, this was just a big surprise for baseball. By 1985, he was at Mets spring training. Look, here he is with Mets pitching coach Mel Stottlemyre and outfielder Lenny Dykstra. If Sid had gone under the radar due to his unconventional origins, all that changed in the spring. Standing six foot four and at 28 years of age, a prime year for a lot of major league players, he could throw hard. Wanna know how hard? Here's a graph. This is Carlos Villanueva's 57 mile per hour pitch. 57 miles an hour. <laughs> this is a 100 mile per hour fastball. This is Aroldis Chapman's 106 mile per hour pitch, the hardest in-game pitch an MLB radar gun has ever recorded. And this is where Sid Finch was said to be. 168 miles per hour. Easy thing to think there is a radar gun malfunction. For example, I once went to a spring training game as a kid where, to my memory, the stadium radar gun showed a guy throwing about 180 miles an hour. I looked the picture up on the internet recently, and he's now a car salesman. Nothing wrong with that, but what car salesman can throw a baseball that hard? What do I think happened? Sid consistently hit triple digits enough to where someone, stunned by how hard he was throwing already, just ran with it and it was documented. Radar gun misreads happen. This one was just probably taken down like the others in the heat of the moment with the guy who held the gun probably in a real state of shock anyway. Then came the Sports Illustrated article. Sid generated enough buzz to finally warrant his story coming out. Mets fans rejoiced. The rest of the league was terrified. People could maybe get hits off Dwight Gooden every once in a while around that time. Even based on the small amount of what was already known about Sid Finch, there seemed to be no chance at hitting him. 
This is a very interesting situation. The floodgates had opened. Everyone knew about Sid Finch. You would think it was only a matter of time before he stepped on the mound at Shea Stadium to carry the Mets to a World Series. There was just one thing. He didn't exist. We have been hoodwinked, bamboozled, led astray, run amok, and flat out deceived. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention, the Sports Illustrated article came out on April 1st. The Mets were in on it, and they duped the world. A week later, they basically said that Sid quit baseball, and then the week after that, admitted the whole thing was a hoax. Sid Finch was played by an actor, and the goal was to make an April Fool's Day edition of Sports Illustrated. And it worked. Considering GTA 5 convinced everyone that it can be a winter wonderland in California, it's not too crazy to understand how Sports Illustrated and the Mets pulled this off. One more thing, the first letter of every word in the subheading of the April 1st article spells out Happy April Fool's Day. If you don't believe it, you can pause and make sure. The Mets went on to post their best year in over a decade in 1985, and win the World Series the next year. Imagine if they had Sid Finch on that team too. Some of you watching are probably kicking yourselves for not realizing this was all a prank. Some of you probably snuffed this out. And to that, good job. Either way, there's not really a lesson to draw from this, except maybe don't believe everything you hear? Honestly, what else is there to say that other than just don't get duped? Hey Mets fans, we did it again! If you made it this far, first off, thanks for watching. If you're new and enjoyed the video, please consider subscribing for more sports content. If you're a returning subscriber and love what you see from us, we have a membership program for anyone interested in extra perks such as sneak peeks and an end screen shout out. Everything you need to know is on screen right now. Alright, that's all for this video. Take it easy guys.